you heard of spit hoods? Think of a fabric bag, the type an unfriendly man in a black suit might put over someone's head in a movie before shoving them into the back of an unmarked van. They're not just in movies. The image of then-teenager Dylan Voller in 2015 strapped to a mechanical restraint chair with one over his head in the Northern Territory's Dondale Youth Detention Centre triggered a Royal Commission, and they've been used by Queensland Police in watch houses since 2009, or they were until last Friday, when the police service quietly banned the practice. Dr Terry Goldsworthy is a former detective inspector with Queensland Police, now an associate professor in criminology at Bond University. Terry, good to have you with us. What is the problem with spit hoods? Look, I think uh, they're not a good look in terms of, as you said, that documentary on uh, ABC didn't portray them in a good light. There's been uh, claims that they're cruel, inhumane and degrading in the way they treat uh, offenders. Uh, and look, there have been some instances that have been problematic where they probably haven't been used appropriately, and that has, uh, in South Australia, in the one case at least, resulted in a death. So uh, overall, I guess the police have looked at it and uh, considered whether they could get by without using them and use other equipment such as PPE gear, etc. and they've obviously come to that conclusion that they can. So they've only been around in Queensland since 2009. Why did we introduce them in the first place? Look, I wasn't privy to the decision why they did, but I imagine it would be something on the lines of uh, that they thought it was a uh, appropriate uh, accoutrement to use in terms of stopping people who are a threat of uh, biting or spitting at police officers or attempting to do so. I mean, they're only available in watch houses, so police on the road didn't have access to them. Uh, and their use was quite uh, tightly controlled in terms of you had to be trained in particular usage of it, had to be reported on the Q Prime, which is the police reporting system, uh, and the officer in charge of the watch house had to be notified as soon as possible. So, I mean, they, they weren't used very regularly. The figures from the police put out, I think, work out less than 20 people per year. Um, so about 0.04% of those people who are in custody. But I guess they thought, you know, if someone wants to sit there and spit blood or whatever else, the police officers will try to bite them, that there was an appropriate response to use. They've obviously changed their minds and uh, they'll be using some other techniques now to control people who want to engage in that kind of behaviour. I mean, PPE is going to protect you from spitting. It's not going to protect you from biting. What kind of other techniques could police use? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, you know, you can... Position someone's head such that they can't uh, bite you, I guess. And I see the unions talking about open, closed-hand tactics. I think that's entirely appropriate, to be honest. I mean, if someone is attempting to bite you, will spit at you. I don't think anyone expects the police just to stand there and cop it. So uh, by closed-hand tactics, it could be, you know, pushing the head, controlling the movement of the head so that it can't get in position to spit or bite. Uh, ultimately, if the threat is such, uh, someone's bleeding and uh, they make a clear intention to spit or something, a police officer may use closed-hand tactics to stop the attack. Uh, so that's, uh, I guess, you, you've got to have some response there for the police. If they're not going to use the hoods, they've got to be able to use something else. And, uh, you know, PPE gear will be obviously be available in watch houses. Uh, the problem with it being on the road with the police for operational, it may be in the boot of the car, but these situations often unfold very rapidly. You don't have time to uh, go and unlock the boot and get PPE gear on before someone's doing this kind of behaviour. So the union's saying it's going to back officers using open hand or closed hand techniques to protect themselves from being spat on or bitten, as you mentioned. So what does that actually mean? What does that involve? Well, look, I guess, uh, you know, they're talking in terms of uh, if there's investigation and use of force. I mean, uh, you know, police use, uh, use force every day of the week in hundreds of matters. I mean, the union always will be in a position of backing them. Uh, what you don't want to see is any uh, behaviour that isn't justified or excused or authorised by law in terms of the application of the use of force model. So I, I assume the, the police union is intimating that, that they're not going to support any behaviour that's not appropriate. Um, but they're suggesting that, obviously, to their officers that, you know, you don't have the option. And as I said, it was only in watch houses, so the police in the street have been using these techniques anyway for people who are spitting and biting at them. Um, so the watch house uh, staff will have to... Uh, you know, I guess react the way that the police in the street do. He didn't have the benefit of having spit hoods when someone decided to bite or spit at them. So that can, my understanding is that could involve, you know, wrist and arm locks, upper body holds, neck restraints. Yeah, look, it won't be any, you don't need, you can just need to control someone's head and you can do that without uh, blocking off the oxygen supply or anything like that. You don't put people in choker holds. I mean, that's not an appropriate use of force anyway. Um, but it would be the matter of like handcuffing them, positioning their head such that it's not facing you, 
uh, and controlling the head movement if someone wants to engage in that kind of behaviour. Uh, and then they can be put into the back of a van or behind a shield in a police vehicle where uh, they're not going to be able to make contact with the officers if they do spit. I mean, you know, spitting and biting is, is just one of the most degrading uh, and deplorable assaults uh, that take place on police because not only is there the assault, but then the police have to get a disease order to make sure there's no blood-borne virus that's been transmitted, which caused considerable angst to the officers. According to police operational procedures, though, those closed-hand tactics can include things like punches and elbow and knee strikes or kicks. Is that well, level of force know. excessive? Yeah. yeah. Well, it depends on the circumstances. I mean, I do expert opinions in these matters, and every use of force is dependent on the context and the circumstances. So all of those options are available on the use of force model. I mean, that's public knowledge. It's on their operational procedures model, which you can, uh, manual, which you can download off the net. Um, but they need to be, as I said, authorised, justified excuse. So if you're going to kick someone in the head, uh, you'd need to justify why you thought that was a good option compared to perhaps controlling the head by putting your hand on the back of the neck and just making sure they can't turn around to face you. So, I mean, please, uh, all these use of force uh, options uh, are there, but they need to justify the use of them. So uh, I know some people are concerned by the language open and close hand tactics, but, I mean, they've been using those tactics for years and they will continue to use them. How many Australian jurisdictions now still use spit hoods, Terry? Look, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I don't think, uh, I think we might have been the last one or one of the, the second last ones. So most of them have removed the usage of them. Um, and they're going the way of Queensland uh, and not engaging their use. Uh, some There is a distinction too between prisons and police. I mean, the police aren't using them, but I think uh, there are some prisons that do still use them. Terry Goldsworthy, interesting to get your perspective on this. Thank you. Thanks, Annie. Terry Goldsworthy on ABC Radio Queensland. He is a former detective inspector with the Queensland Police, now an associate professor in criminology at Bond University. All right, it's news time now at six o'clock.